how the people are doing. So, it's been a while since I made a video. Exams, what can we say? But that's all wrapped up now and today we have the video comparison between the S21 Ultra and the X60 Pro Plus. Well, if you have seen the X60 Pro Plus versus the S21 Ultra's photography comparison, well then this one is gonna be very different. Like I'm talking about the entire comparison as a whole. So without any further ado, let's jump right in with selfie video. Alright, now here we have the selfie video for both of these. You know, it's, it's not a particularly strong start for a X60 because it's not great video quality as such. It's not terrible or anything, but in a flagship, I personally believe that we should have good video quality. This isn't good as such. I think the S21 Plus 5 has really good video quality with 4K and it can go up to 4K60 as well. The Vivo, as you might know already, is capped at 1080p30. So, yeah, not particularly good. And honestly, I don't care much about selfie video. So, it, you know, coming from me, it might sound odd, but I still feel like in a flagship, there should be good selfie video. It's just plain and simple. But anyways, I'll, uh, I'll let you guys know about, you know, how the dynamic range, colors, and audio, everything looks like soon enough. So, as you saw right there, not, not good news for the X60. The dynamic range wasn't very nice. You can see so many highlights are getting clipped out. And the details also cannot really match up to the S21 Ultra. The resolution difference is very obvious, as you'd expect. And secondly, the audio. Well, here I think the X60 is just trying too hard to cancel out the background noise. The S21 on the other hand is taking a much milder approach and uh, frankly I prefer it because it's producing crisp and clear voice. The X60 just feels muffled. I really hope that Vivo can improve on the overall mic and the video quality from the front cameras for the next generation. So yeah, not a great start, but the rear cameras are after all where the X60 really gets much closer to the S21. But I think the dynamic range problem still kind of persists. Like it's not obvious in every moment, but it's definitely present. Couple that with the much higher contrast on the X60 and you can see a lot of shadows are just getting completely crushed. That's not particularly nice to see. But if I had to pick one for color accuracy, it would be the X60. Because, you know, sometimes on the S21, maybe it's the HDR processing that's causing this, but at times, the S21 just has this weird tone in the sky or maybe sometimes in the leaves. That's not the case on the X60, ever really. Then for versatility, well, we can go to two times on the X60 and three times on the S21, but on the S21, we can also go to 10 times optical zoom. And we can also zoom out to the ultra wide camera. We cannot do that while recording for the X60. And technically, we do have a 5 times optical zoom on the X60, but being just 8 megapixels, it cannot record 4K video, which is really sad because, frankly, having a 5 times zoom would give such a huge boost to versatility if only it was 4K. Anyways, let's move on to the ultra wide cameras, and this is the place where I would say that the X60 has somewhat of a wild card. It has the gimbal stabilization that we saw first debuted last year built in here. Now ultra wide cameras as you might know already are very stable as such so if you put the very high quality gimbal stabilization on the ultra wide well then you get some tremendous stabilization and you know at first glance you might feel like it's not such a huge deal basically both are giving good video but after closer examination i did notice a lot more jerks on the s21 just across the board but all that said and done x60 still has a dynamic range problem in numerous cases a lot of highlights were blown out shadows getting crushed wasn't that much of a problem at least in this case but the highlights yeah they they get blown out a lot on the x60 and then we have 4k 60 this is with the main cameras and you know, is it just me or are there a ton of over sharpening artifacts on the S21? I've never seen that before. It could be a part of the HDR processing and somehow in this case it seems very apparent but look at those leaves, there's a bunch of haloing going on. Now being 4K60, there is going to be some loss in dynamic range as such but overall I think the S21 is still going to pull ahead just by a little bit. As for the ultra wide cameras, well here. I think that post-processing issue that I talked about, it's a lot more apparent now. 
compared to even the main cameras. Like almost every single leaf has this weird over sharpening border around it, which frankly doesn't look all that good. The X60, it doesn't have that problem, but it does have much worse dynamic range compared to the S21. Now the detail levels can be higher sometimes, presumably because of slightly higher quality ultra wide sensor on the X60, but otherwise, I still kind of like the S21 because of the higher dynamic range. Although that over sharpening, now that I've seen it, it kind of bothers me. And speaking of dynamic range, well, the X60 does have a little trick up its sleeve. There's a dedicated HDR mode. It's not HDR 10 plus, just HDR. And if you turn it on, you get better dynamic range, like noticeably better. There is a little bit of stutter while I'm panning for some odd reason, but anyways, Overall, it's really good. The only problem is you cannot use it with the ultra wide camera. So, if you want the better dynamic range, you're gonna have to stick with the main cameras. Now, for the ultra stable mode, or rather super steady for the S21 Ultra, well, essentially the stabilization is surprisingly similar on both. Even though the X60 has the gimbal stabilization, I gotta say the software on the S21 is really good at keeping up. But there is a little issue I noticed on the S21. Basically, because of all of the software processing and the fact that it's using the ultra wide camera, I think overall the X60 has much better video quality. You know, the details like in the far off leaves and everything, it is very crisp compared to the S21. Now 8K video, well, we will do a dedicated details test. So definitely stay tuned. But yeah, as you can see, the stabilization is particularly bad for the X60. The S21 does have a huge crop and everything, but it does manage to also keep a slightly more stable approach with 8K. And the dynamic range, as you can see, is also definitely better in numerous cases. So yeah, 8K isn't, isn't all that good on the X60, especially if you want to walk around with it. It's a bad idea. Now let us move on to our pretty iconic HDR test. Now there are going to be certain flickers because there's a little issue with the light in the background but disregarding that, essentially this acts as both a dynamic range test and also a good test for focusing because as you'll see soon enough, Valentine moves a lot. And so overall I think, I think the S21 is definitely taking a massive upper hand in focusing because not only is it faster but it's also very accurate. Like in numerous cases I can see that the X60 wouldn't focus on Valentine even though he was being center framed. But otherwise I actually like how the X60 looks quite a bit. Not only are the colors a lot more accurate but because of the slightly higher contrast it has a lot less green. The X60 is noticeably cleaner compared to the S21 here. So yeah, quite a few differences. I mean, I honestly don't know which one I want to pick here. Basically, I like how the X60 looks, but I also really appreciate how fast the S21 focuses. Also, it has better shadow details, so I'm going to leave this up to you guys. All right, before the details test, let's finish up with low light. And here, as you'd expect, both the phones will take a fairly major hit in terms of focusing. I think the X60 is still just slightly slower in certain cases. And it's also got a weird warm cast all over the video for some odd reason. I'm not sure why it's doing that because the S21 on the other hand is looking a lot more balanced. But yeah, otherwise, I would say both are doing a pretty good job, except for the white balance problem on the X60, because both have fairly good details and the sensors being nice and large can let in a lot of light even in such low light conditions. So yeah, overall low light isn't particularly bad on either. The ultra wide cameras, well, this is where the X60 pulls ahead because now we have a much larger sensor on the X60 which can give us better details and also a noticeably cleaner video. There's so much more grain on the S21. It's, I'm pretty sure even you guys can see it. And you know, overall, I really like that the X60 is going for the larger, higher quality ultra wide cameras. And it's definitely time that Samsung puts one of these amazing sensors on their ultra wides as well. All right, now details. Well, this is going to be interesting. So this is 4K 30. And before we move on, can I just mention how different both of these look? I did say that the higher contrast can cause dynamic range loss in certain cases. But here, as you can see, it looks really good on the X60. The higher contrast, it's kind of winning my heart right there. But zooming right in, this is, I believe, a four times crop. And, you know, 
considering how much we're cropping in and considering how little difference there is, I would say both are very good, but I do believe that the S21 is pulling ahead just by a little bit. It's not a huge difference, but there's definitely better overall clarity in the smaller details. So yeah, I think the S21 is getting a tiny little win right here. Now for the ultra wide cameras, one might expect that the X60 is going to do a better job because it has a slightly higher quality sensor. So let's crop right in and see for ourselves. Yeah, I expected a larger difference. Yeah, honestly, I had hoped that the X60 would perform better than it is doing now. Which also means that the S21 is doing a really good job given that it has a much smaller and a 12 megapixel sensor. This is quite an admirable result, but even so, the X60 is still pulling ahead. I think it has slightly more sharpness in some of the finer details compared to the S21. The grain level is fairly similar, maybe a little bit less on the X60, but overall, I think the X60 deserves a tiny little win right here. And now finally we have 8K. Well, this is gonna be kinda interesting because both of these use their main cameras and so let's crop right in and well, to be honest, the difference is pretty minor. Essentially, what I can tell you here is that the X60 has more grain in the background, but also producing a slightly sharper result, like some of the textures are just a little bit sharper. On the S21, however, the overall sharpness is lower, so the video is soft, but you do get much less grain in the background, so you're essentially gonna have to pick and choose. But the S21 with better stabilization and slightly better dynamic range in certain situations, I think 8K video is still better on the S21. Now both of these also have HDR10 plus video recording. I, I would say that both are doing a pretty good job. The X60 is brighter, so it has more shadow detail and it's also clipping some of the highlights. The opposite is true for the S21 Ultra. You know, both are very good here, but as I say for almost every single HDR10 plus or Dolby Vision clip that I show, you gotta watch it in HDR. Only then can you really appreciate just how amazing it can look. Now moving on to night mode time lapse. Well, the X60 doesn't have the feature, so yeah, there's not much to talk about here. Obviously, the S21 has better video quality with night mode, and it is also pulling ahead in resolution because it's just 1080p on the X60. This is also one of the areas where Vivo should improve with their next generation. At least I hope so. Now finally, we have slow motion. This is 1080p 240 on both, and well, initially I had thought both were very similar except for slightly higher contrast on the X60, which does look amazing by the way. The extra contrast gives this punchiness to the entire video, which I'm personally a huge fan of in this case. But upon closer inspection, I did notice that there is quite a bit more sharpness on the X60. The green levels are similar, so the sharpness is just a bonus, in a manner of speaking. If you look very closely at the bubbles in the coffee, yeah, there it's kind of visible that the X60 is the one with better details here. So, that's it. And, well, it was, it was a fairly long one, but it does give us a slight idea that, yeah, Vivo needs to improve their videography game as a whole. Now, I would say that the Vivo isn't all that bad. I mean, we are comparing it to probably one of the most expensive and also one of the best all-around cameras out there. Like, the S21 Ultra is fantastic with video. There are shortcomings there as well, but otherwise, I would say the X60 isn't terrible. It's not amazing or anything like that, but it's, it's definitely usable. You know, I would say that the X60's videography right now It'd be for someone who doesn't care much about video. If all you want is amazing photography, and almost photography that can rival that of the S21 Ultra, but you don't want to spend as much money for the S21, then the X60 is the very good way to go. On the videography side of things, there are numerous areas where it needs to improve. The selfie video, it needs a complete overhaul there. And as for the main camera, well, I would say there we need a you know, overall better dynamic range in the normal mode. Same goes for the ultra wide. Better dynamic range is definitely needed there, because otherwise it's a fantastic ultra wide camera with ridiculously good stabilization. Yeah, the S21 isn't all that bad with stabilization, but the X60 is better there. It just needs better dynamic range. So that's that's the common complaint that I've had overall. 
and as I said before, it's only for those who don't care much about video. So with that said, I do hope you guys enjoyed, if you did, do that like button, subscribe if you aren't ready, and I will be seeing you guys later. Cheers.